various uh, effective uh, temperatures. So when the theta equal to zero is reduced to constraint EFT, so that means uh, it's constraint LTA. Constraint LTA have large uh, error here as, as a dissociation limit uh, due to the Markey reference character. And uh, the, the error can be uh, systematically improved, uh, it reduced uh, by increasing uh, the effective temperature. So as you can see, with the temperature C dot uh, in the range of 30 and 50 mini uh the steady correlation error is vanishingly finish, small. And uh, that, that's supported by our conjecture that uh, uh, strong steady correlation can be properly simulated when the fictitious temperature C dot is shown so that natural orbital occupation are approximately described by the occupation number given by tau DFT. So the uh, full CI means exact, uh, exact result. And the exact uh, natural orbital occupation number, so you see this is uh, the, the data for the uh, exact result. And uh, when the C dot is between 30 and 50, then the curve simulates this natural, uh, exact natural orbital occupation number. And uh, this shows the entropy contribution uh, for uh, the C that uh, dissolves the uh, H2 property. So the, the entropy contribution, uh, we argue, is a strong steady correlation. Uh, it's small, near equilibrium separation. And it, it gets more and more important and, re and approach to a constant as a dissociation limit. And uh, similarly, uh, we saw uh, uh, N2 dissociation uh, with temp uh, for tau LDA with temperature between 30 and 50 can dissociate N2 property. And that's also related uh, to the uh, the reference value is obtained by multi reference configuration integration method uh, of uh, the, uh, the corresponding natural orbital occupation number. So you can see it can, simu it can be simulated very nicely uh, for from tau LDA with uh, a C dot between 30 and 50 uh, mini partial. So similar uh, result here. And for single reference system, natural orbital occupation number are close to uh, either zero or one. That implying that C dot effective temperature should be very small. As you can see for single reference uh, system, uh, tau LDA with a sufficiently uh, small C dot performs similarly to constraint LDA. And when you, when you increase the C dot result will be, uh, will have large error. It's because for single reference system, the effective temperature is argued to be small in order to simulate natural orbital occupation number. When you use larger C data, that means that you, you saw it's a strongly correlated system, but that's, that's incorrect physics uh, for a uh, uh, single reference system. Therefore, uh, tau LDA with uh, uh, effective temperature C data equal to seven, as large as seven mini Hartree still can perform similarly to constraint LDA. So the choice of C dot will be actually related to the distribution of NOO and uh, natural orbital occupation number. However, for simple study, the optimal C dot is defined as the largest C dot for which tau LDA performs similarly uh, to case LDA, uh, let's say the C dot is equal to zero case uh, for single reference system. So in our study, uh, as, as we have shown on the previous slide, the, this optimal C dot is uh, defined as, se as seven mini Hartree, which is approximately uh, 0.2 EB uh, in uh, the unit of EB. So tau LDA with C dot uh, equal to seven mini half is found to consistently improve upon constraint LDA uh, for even for multi-reference system. It may not be optimized, but it consistently improves uh, for multi-reference system. Uh, as you can see here, it reduces the error even if, if it's not optimized. Uh, okay, then we can uh, move on to beta approximation, tau GGA. So you can uh, move, uh, use uh, GGA uh, exchange correlation functional, and for each that you can either use LDA or uh, gradient function approximation. We argue this should improve uh, tau LDA mainly for the property governed by short range exchange correlation effect uh, due to the improved uh, short range uh, exchange correlation hold as a short range. And we also argue the orbital energy gap of tau LDA and the tau GGA should be similar. Uh, therefore, we argue the optimal theta for tau LDA and the tau GGA, uh, let's say we call it tau DFA, should be similar. As, as shown from this figure, uh, this is also H2 dissociation with tau LDA and the three tau GGA. So as shown from this figure, tau LDA and the tau GGA with the same theta, 
perform similarly for H2 dissociation. So for C dot equal to zero, this is the uh, rate curve here, similar. And the SEVA reduced the error, so it's also similar. And the 40 uh, mini half you can dissolve the molecule correctly, and it's also consistent. And a similar result for N-fold dissociation. Therefore, we can safely adopt C dot equal to seven for both tau LDA and tau CGA. And here, uh, we show the mean absolute error uh, for tau EFA with the temp effective temperature uh, C dot equal to seven mini half for, uh, for several uh, single reference systems. So for example here, uh, means that we have 223 atomization energy in the standard uh, set of G390 lab. And the 40 ionization potential, 25 electron affinity, 8 photon affinity, 38 nitrogen high, uh, non-hydrogen non transfer barrier height, 38 hydrogen transfer barrier heights, and the 22 non-covalent interaction of the S22 uh, set, and 30 reaction energy. And here we also show the geometry information, uh, 166 bound lengths uh, for diatomy, uh, for, for, for diatomy or uh, small molecule. And uh, as you can see, for single reference system, uh, tau DFAs perform uh, similar to the corresponding uh, constraint DFA. Uh, for example, tau PBE performs similarly to uh, constraint PBE. Tau BOIP performs similarly to uh, constraint BOIP. And in general, tau GGA perform better uh, than uh, tau LDA. So you see the number, the, uh, the, when the number is small, that means it has smaller uh, error. So tau LDA have, still have a uh, large error for the optimization energy. But tau GG has uh, reduced, further reduced the error. And uh, now we can also uh, perform uh, the, the hybrid, uh, we can also construct the hybrid function. The motivation for doing this is that for short uh, single reference system hybrid functional in tau DFD could perform better uh, than uh, tau DFA, uh, tau LDA, and tau GGA. And uh, to make a hybrid functional, we need to consider uh, the what's the exact exchange should be defined uh, in tau DFD. So we look at the exchange, exact exchange defined in constraint DFD, uh, which is defined as the Hartree Fock exchange evaluated with constraint orbital. So given by this expression. And in tau DFT, we are not able to get the constraint orbital in order to evaluate its exact change. And uh, so we define the uh, exact change in tau DFT as the Hartree fact exchange free energy uh, evaluated by the tau orbital and the, the, uh, their occupation number, so given by this expression. And uh, similar to, to justify why we need to adopt different uh, this why we adopt this definition other than just we are not able to get constraint orbital. We consider uh, uh, those, uh, the, those defined in uh, the Purdue Zanger self interaction correction scheme, uh, the self Hartree energy and the uh, self exchange energy. We found that uh, when we use this definition, complete consolidation of the self interaction in the Hartree energy can, uh, can be achieved by uh, the full exact exchange are defined here. So that, that also justifies why we use this definition. And uh, to take up the difference between the exact change in case TFT and the exact change in health TFT, uh, we found that the difference was in EXC, uh, which, is the, uh, which is the difference between the exchange free energy at C dot equal to zero and that at temperature C dot. And we, make, we can make density function approximation to EXC that and, uh, and uh, to get uh, to to uh, to connect these two uh, exact changes. And uh, also the exact change in tau DFT, uh, while it's free of the self interaction error, the scheme would not perform satisfactory for most systems due to the lack of correlation functional. Therefore, we, the next logical step is to consider hybrid functional. And in, in the hybrid functional in um, constraint DFT are uh, case global hybrid functional. Uh, you have a, uh, a fraction of the exact uh, Hartree Fock exchange and a fraction of DFT, uh, DFA exchange and the full uh, DFA correlation. And uh, the corresponding global hybrid functional in tau DFT uh, is defined, have, will define, have a similar form. We simply replace this term uh, by this uh, expression. So you have, can, 
directly transfer any global hybrid functional defined in KSTFT to the corresponding global hybrid functional in tau CFT without the need to construct new functional. So that saves a lot of time. And for computational efficiency, uh, the total energy is minimized with respect to one reduced density metric, not the density, because this can contain uh, the information of orbital, and it's not practical to minimize the uh, energy with respect to orbital, uh, which will increase the cost. However, if we do uh, minimization with respect to one RDM, the cost it will be similar to a uh, lot of solving the hard refer equation, so it's still efficient. At, uh, at least for finite system. But for solid, uh, for extended system, I know some people start to work on efficient scheme for solving Hartree bar equation uh, for periodic system. So uh, this will also be uh, efficient in the future. And uh, uh, for in this world, we employ uh, LDA EC bar and LDA uh, EXC bar. And uh, as you can see, tau uh, GH, uh, this equation, is reduced to constraint GH as C bar equal to zero. And uh, that means that without strong correlation, the, the performance of tau GH will be the same as that uh, in, uh, in case DFT, so it's case GH. And the tau GH is reduced to tau DFA bar when X is turned to zero. Similarly, we can also extend the scheme uh, to range separation, uh, to range separated hybrid function. And as you can see, we see H2 uh, dissociation again, uh, because we have some uh, exact result to compare. And uh, tau P3 is a hybrid function in tau DFT. Tau P PD0 is another hybrid function in tau, uh, tau DFT. And as you can see, strong static correlation can also be properly simulated when the fictitious temperature C dye is chosen so that occupation of the natural orbital occupation numbers are approximately given by the occupation number uh, produced by tau uh, GH. Similar result can be obtained for N2. And uh, for single reference system, again, uh, uh, the effective temperature should be small. And uh, for simplicity, the optimal C dash is also defined as the largest C dash for which tau GH performs similarly to the corresponding case GH, let's say the C dash equal to zero uh, case for single reference system. Uh, since for tau DFAs, the effective temperature uh, is 7 mini Hartree, and the tau PV0, uh, from numerical study, we found the effective temperature is around 20 mini Hartree. Then, why, why, why the effect optimal temperature is different? Because when you mix Hartree bar uh, exchange, it opens up the orbital gap. That means that to retain similar uh, distribution of uh, occupation number, you need to have effectively larger effective temperature to simulate uh, the same distribution. So that explains why it's larger. And we make a simple linear interpolation between uh, these two uh, to raise the optimal theta as a function of the fraction of Hartree bar exchange. So when x equal to zero, that means uh, DFA is reduced, the theta is reduced to seven automatically. When the x uh, is uh, one over four, uh, the, the one we associated with uh, this PV zero, it reduced to 20. So we can generate uh, the theta for each global hybrid function in contract uh, DFT. And uh, here shows the performance. Uh, for single reference system, tau GH performs similarly uh, to the corresponding contract uh, uh, system, a uh, contract DFT. And in general, tau GH performs better than tau DFA. As you can see, the number uh, keep reducing. Uh, this, this shows tau GH, and here is tau GGA, here is tau LDA. So the number here is uh, very uh, slow. That mean, uh, small, that means the error is small uh, for hybrid functional in tau DFT. And now we talk about the application. So here uh, we apply the tau DFT to uh, ZZ graphene narrow ribbon. And uh, since we want to know the effect of length, so we uh, start from uh, the finite system calculation. So we, not only we, we can see the, uh, the effect of width, but also we see the effect of length. And the GNR, and, and the M means the number of uh, bending ring in the armchair, armchair direction. And the N here is means the number of bending ring uh, in the ZZ dire direction. So here is uh, G, GNR 210, and the uh, pendulum is uh, GNR 15. And uh, we employ uh, tau LDA, 
and it's the optimal temperature to study various uh, kind of uh, physical general reasons. And here we plot the singular triply energy gap versus the uh, the number of bending uh, the, the the ribbon lengths. And as you can see, the ST gap uh, singular triply gap from experiment uh, and also accurate at initial calculation, which is which are DMRG uh, density matrix renormalization group, and also the couple cluster measure uh, decrease monotonically with the ribbon lengths. So as you can see, this is the experimental result and this is the DMRG result. However, uh, and this trend is consistent with our tau LDA at the breakup here. However, the sing singular triple gap from Hongshan LDA and can be really is a hybrid function in the case DFT, uh, unexpectedly increase uh, for the longer ZGNR due to symmetry breaking in the corresponding singular form states, singular states. So, and uh, the, the effect of symmetry breaking uh, gets larger and larger. So you see, can be really can have very large error uh, here when the width of uh, this equity narrow ribbon is, uh, is larger. So what is, the <coughs> what is the data in the picture? Uh, the data shows the energy difference between the lowest triple state and the lowest single state. But wh where are the points in the uh, point? The, uh, the exper when you say experiment? Experiment uh, is this pink. Uh, square is probably covered by tau LTA, <laughs> so that means it's a good. <coughs> but, but it's, it's only only until five, right? Because it's only available up to tendency, and it's very hard to synthesize the long chain when uh, aging. So experimentally, it's also a challenging system, and the theoretically, it's also a challenging system because the accurate theory like DMRG, CCD, couple cluster method are not applicable for long chain mm -hmm. aging. But and, this uh, and the efficient measure cannot can get wrong answer. But these data points have no error bars. It's just uh, oh, it's an experimental result. It only shows the data. <laughs> it does not in include the error bar in the paper. So I only I can only uh, put the uh, the reference data they show. Unless it's yeah. smaller than the smaller <laughs> than the marker, <market>, maybe. <laughs> yeah. At least the uh, is consistent with also other high level and initial results. And uh, we, uh, we here we show the tau LDA result for up to a hundred uh, bending ring linked together. And there is already more than 2,000 electrons. And uh, they are strongly correlated system. That's, that's very challenging. And uh, we show the ground state that of zero gravity narrow ribbon are all single, while all the, uh, with all, all the width and the length study. And uh, actually, earlier papers even argue that the ground state can be become triply. And uh, we, we say, oh no, it should be simply all, uh, for all the cases. And uh, we also calculate other uh, electronic property, uh, vertical annihilation potential, uh, vertical electron appearance, and there are di different deliver fundamental gap. So we can predict if this material is a good material for solar cell application or not, uh, even if it's a strongly correlated system. And uh, this is the uh, symmetrized dynamic entropy that increase with the uh, ribbon length. Meaning that, the, uh, the, meaning that the, uh, the fractional occupation, the number of fractionally occupied orbitals should also increase to, uh, to get this number increase. Right? And uh, so we plot the uh, active orbital occupation number here. So the occupation number for HOMO, HOMO minus one to HOMO minus eight, LUMO, LUMO plus one to LUMO plus eight. And uh, it shows that uh, for very small uh, ribbon and the system is crucial system. However, when the end is getting larger, the ribbon length is increased, then the number of fractionally occupied orbitals increase uh, with the uh, increase of the ribbon length. Implying that longer uh, ZZ gravinear ribbon should possess increasing poly radical character. And uh, the prediction of this orbital crossing behavior has been recently confirmed by accurate two reduced density metric calculation uh, just published on uh, 2000. 16 confirm our prediction that's made in uh, 2015. By uh, later, they have an uh, accurate method to confirm this. And uh, we also plot the real space representation of the, this active orbital and confirm that the active orbital may be localized at the ZZH, uh, same for the wider uh, ribbon. And uh, here is the another system. Uh, 
about the cyclicity is so also an interesting paper published in uh, scientific reports. So when we uh, this is the pentachain, and uh, when we want to we, we want to see if we circle around this molecule and uh, to form a fuse uh, to form a closed loop, will the electronic structure change or not? So this is also an interesting system. And uh, to compare the, the effect of this sickly uh, topology, uh, topological effect, uh, we can we also uh, calculate NAC uh, to compare with this uh, N cyclic. The N means number of bending ring uh, in this cyclic. And uh, so up to a hundred uh, also. So it's a very efficient method. And as you can see, the electronic property of cyclic is hidden on uh, this accelerated behavior relative to the corresponding property of uh, AC. And uh, for small n, and uh, you will reduce to the, prop the corresponding property of AC uh, with increasing number of bending rings. And uh, to, to, to the best of our knowledge, this is the first report that shows uh, this uh, behavior. So we predict uh, this. And this is the uh, other uh, electronic uh, property that we have shown for AC case. We just also have this oscillation and uh, converge to the property, uh, the corresponding property of AC. And this shows the active orbital occupation number. So you, you see this kind of uh, wave packet uh, behavior here. And also uh, the number of fractionally occupied orbitals increase with the cyclic size. And uh, implying that larger cyclotin should possess increasing polyurethane polarity. And uh, we show uh, HOMO and RUMO's active orbital are many low as a uh, per per peripheral uh, carbon uh, others. Okay, uh, so due to the time limit, I on only have one slide for this. So actually, in, in this paper, we have, have two, two works. One is to propose a simple model using Kukura and non-Kukura structure to explain qualitatively uh, the radical character of alternate PNH. Uh, and uh, we verify this model by tau PFA occupation number. And uh, we, the second work is we verify the accuracy of tau LPA occupation number with the natural orbital occupation number of a highly, highly accurate uh, multi-reference method. So, for, so I'll, this slide only shows the second work. Uh, for the 24, uh, Alternate uh, PH is showing here. Uh, the tau L orbital occupation number are similar to the natural orbital occupation number of RDM, our case SCF method, a highly accurate multi reference method. So you see uh, this red curve is the accurate uh, NOON, and blue curve is the homo of uh, the corresponding orbit orbital occupation number by tau L So the trend is similar, similar uh, for the rumor. And uh, here we show the uh, the lithium assault acid could be a high capacity uh, hydrogen storage material and uh, ambient condition. And uh, since we already argue pent acid is a strongly correlated system, and we even found when you dump lithium on top of the center of this uh, bending, uh, this system is also a strongly correlated system. So conventional electronic uh, structure method uh, cannot be applicable uh, for the study of this system. And we show, uh, uh, based on our results, uh, the, the each, each lithium can absorb up to two H2 molecules uh, in this ideal binding range. Uh, so the ideal binding range is, means that uh, in this when the binding energy is in this range, the H2 molecule can be absorbed and uh, also to solve reverse body uh, at the ambient condition. And that's the material we want for hydrogen storage. And a similar result uh, can be found for lithium terminated carbon chain. And we just recently uh, submit to our, uh, the scientific report. And the lithium uh, terminated uh, carbon chain uh, can also be high capacity uh, hydrogen storage material near this uh, ambient condition. So it increased the capacity uh, the weight percentage, but the binding energy is slightly lower, but it's close to this idea of uh, binding energy range. So in conclusion, uh, we have developed tau DFT uh, with uh, a DFT with fractional orbital occupation produced by fermi dirac distribution, uh, where strong correlation can, has been shown to be precisely tried by the entropy contribution 
provided that the fictitious temperature C by children so that the natural op orbital occupation number can be properly simulated by the occupation number uh, provided by uh, tau DFT. For system with strong steady correlation effect, the DFA and hyper function in tau DFT with the optimal C dot value consistently improve, even if, even if they are not optimally uh, improved uh, upon the uh, corresponding functional in case DFT, let's say the C dot equals to zero case. Relative to tau DFA, hyper functional in tau DFT are superior in performance for various applications. Tau DFT has similar computational cost as constraint DFT for single point energy configuration and analytical gradient. Especially this, this, this analytical gradient is very important because it defines the optimized geometry of the system. I saw many paper uh, that claim their multi reference method are efficient, but they don't have analytical gradient. So they don't have a, a geometry to evaluate the improved single point energy. And uh, uh, usually they adopt like efficient method like constraint DFT to cut the geometry. And uh, they claim it's, it's wrong for energy, but they use the geometry obtained uh, by constraint DFT. So this is a contra contradiction. And we have a consistent theory to obtain geometry and uh, evaluate the single point energy. And uh, the, the tau DFT reduced to constraint DFT in the absence of strong, cor strong correlation. Therefore, tau DFT is an ideal uh, method for the study of narrow scale system with strong correlation, which are challenging system for conventional electronic structure method. Our future work is to improve the functional part and uh, propose a C dot that's actually related to the distribution of natural orbital occupation number. And uh, also we want to uh, work on some fundamental uh, property and uh, extend the theory, uh, move on to extend the system when we verify the accuracy of the theory. If it's correct enough, we can impose periodic boundary condition and uh, apply the theory to uh, study solid time. And uh, we also want to extend the theory to excited state and time dependent property. And uh, in the meantime, we always can have more application to narrow scale system with strong correlation. So I would like to thank my uh, students who and the collaborators who have uh, contributed to this work uh, or other works that does, uh, don't have time to discuss uh, in this talk. And the uh, funding from most uh, NTU and NCTS, and thank you for your attention. Okay, the floor is open for questions. Um, that was a very nice talk, and I probably only understood 10%, but um, the question I, maybe five, okay, I don't want to, uh, the question I have is, um, you were showing that the, uh, that the carbon chains with the lithium ends um, were uh, absorbing surprisingly a lot of hydrogen. Um, is that something that Koncham DFT would have also predicted, or is that yet another reason for me to throw away my DFT? Actually, we first showed the electronic property of this system uh, from both Kongshan and the Tau DFT. But the electronic uh, property for this system uh, already shows even up oscillation. For example, for even number of carbon atoms, it can be a uh, stable system that from the occupation number is zero and two. And but for the other even, uh, for carbon chain with even number of uh, carbon atoms, the occupation number is one, yeah. so it becomes directical. So constraint DFT cannot provide consistent description for this system. That, sorry, can I follow up? Uh, yeah. So it seems that that oscillation is also something you were seeing for the cyclocene. Yeah, that's, that's but, right. It's uh, similar, but it's even more severe here. It's, it's fully degenerate. But um, even for your tau DFT, <laughs> you still had some oscillation. Could you go back to the cyclocene, um, the single triplet state? Voices radius. One more. Previously. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so the NN cyclic scene is still oscillating. That's a real feature or that's still an artifact of the simulation? Yeah, actually some some uh, earlier work has explained kind of qualitatively print because oh. no one actually know uh, the, the, the the property because experimentally it, it hasn't possible. been synthesized. Yes. And uh, theoretically since the method is not available before they only can study this with model Hamiltonian. And even with model Hamiltonian, they already can argue this oscillation. 